So the third primary option for uh, configuring a InterVLAN routing is to use a layer 3 switch. And here in the network you see I've taken out my layer 2 switch and I've replaced it with a layer 3 switch. Let's go ahead and look at the configuration. I've done some basic configurations here so far. So let's do a show run so you can see what we've done. So we've set the host name. We've set our um, VLANs. And we've configured our VLANs here. Um, so uh, VLANs, uh, access ports. Now we haven't configured let me scroll back up here just a second. We haven't configured any trunk lines, although you've already seen a couple of messages come up across about native uh, VLAN configurations. Well, native VLAN misconfigurations. Well, the reason that is is because this is a dynamic trunk line. Now, at this point, everything that we have done on the Layer 3 switch has been identical to what we would do on a Layer 2 switch. Okay, no differences whatsoever. We created the VLANs. Do a show VLAN brief. We named the VLANs. We assigned ports to the VLANs. Everything there was identical to what you would do on a layer 3 switch. Now, let's go back to our global config and let's configure our trunk line on interface G01. And this is where we're going to see our first difference. So here's that native VLAN mismatch, um, which we'll deal with here in just a second. So on a layer 3 switch, we did switch port mode trunk or on layer 2 switch. On this one, a multi-layer switch, it won't do it. And you might run into this on some other switches as well. An interface whose trunk, ins whose trunk encapsulation is auto. Now, remember we made reference in a previous video to the fact that we're using the 802.1Q protocol for encapsulation, but there are others. Well, what's happening is we have to set the encapsulation, which is currently set to auto, so it'll try to auto figure out what we're using for encapsulation. We have to set that encapsulation before we can manually configure this thing to always be a trunk line rather than being dynamic auto. So our command is switch port trunk. And here is where we set our encapsulation. So it's, let me try that again, switch port trunk, encapsulation, and because we're in Packet Tracer, it only gives us the dot one Q. Um, if we were on a physical device, it would actually give us more options as well. So trunk uh, encapsulation dot one Q. Now I can do switch port mode trunk and switch port trunk native VLAN 99. Now that sets it to those settings permanently. If you wanted to leave them as auto, then it would give you the, uh, then the uh, switch itself would uh, auto negotiate trunk lines. Okay, so at this point, we have everything running across this whole network exactly like if this was a layer two, uh, layer two switch only, because the only thing we've configured is layer two. All right, for um, inner VLAN routing, what we're going to do is we're going to create interfaces. Um, for our different VLANs. So it's going to be interface VLAN 10, and then we're going to set an IP address. And this address is going to be the default gateway for everybody in VLAN 10. If I can get an F255s in my subnet mask. Interface VLAN 20. IP address 192.168.2.1 Interface VLAN 30 IP address 192.168.3.1 And then I'm going to do the same thing with Interface 99 Interface 99 VLAN 99 IP address 192.168.99.1. All right, now that gives me all of my um, interfaces. So now if I end out and do a show run, whoops, I didn't want show run. I wanted to show IP interface brief. And you'll see all of my VLAN interfaces. Um, 192.168.1.1, 2.1, 3.1, 99.1. At this point, inter-VLAN routing isn't working, but I do want to show you from 
Uh, this PC, I can go to my command prompt and I can ping my default gateway. Ping 192.168.2.168.1.1. And I can ping my default gateway. I can't ping beyond that, so I can't ping 192.168.2.10, even though 2.10 can ping their default gateway. So we are recognizing our default gateway. We can ping to our default gateway, but our default gateway isn't working. And the reason it isn't working is because we need one more command on our layer three switch. Now a layer three switch or a multi-layer switch will operate at multiple layers, layer two and layer three, hence its names, right? But by default, it is pretty much configured to only run at layer two until you issue the command IP routing in global config, and that turns on IP routing on the device. So now if I do a show run, I should see right up here to the top, IP routing. Now, let's go back to this PC, command prompt, and now let's see if we can ping all the way back down to the bottom. See if we can ping 192.168.2.10. So we're going to get a timeout. And we're still getting timeouts. So something about this is not working correctly. Let's see if we can ping 2.11. All right, we can ping 2.11. Let's see if we can ping 3.10. And we're having issues with 3.10, let's see if we can ping 3.11. And that's working. All right, so let's double check our configurations here. show VLAN brief and this PC should be connected to F0. Oh, well, how do you like that? These things are connected to the wrong interfaces. No wonder that's not going to work. Let's reconfigure this one or take this one and plug it into a port for VLAN 30. Take this one and plug it into a port for VLAN 20. That will probably solve our problem. Fast forward, now let's try this. Command prompt and let us ping 192.168.2.10. 192.168.2.10. And there's ARP and replies. Hey, it works better when you plug the PCs into the correct VLANs. All right, which, by the way, is a very common issue that people run into. PCs get plugged into the wrong ports. They're in the wrong VLANs. They don't communicate. Now we have everything working. Whew. All right, cool. I don't have to redo the video. All right, so this is using a Layer 3 switch for inner VLAN routing. All right, what are the advantages of using a Layer 3 switch? Well, like um, router on a stick we don't have to worry about the number of physical interfaces we have. Right? Because we got a ton of them to start with, but we're not actually using them anyway. We're using the SVIs, the switch virtual interfaces, to function as the default gateways. So we don't run into that problem that we have with legacy inner VLAN routing. With router on a stick, our limitations are that we have everything running back and forth to one switch over the um, one trunk line. Well, here, because we're doing it in memory, we don't have that uh, bandwidth limitation off of a single trunk line. So this is probably the most efficient way to do inner VLAN routing. Is there a drawback to it? 
Well, the only real drawback is that whatever switch you're using to do layer 3 switching has to be a multi-layer or layer 3 switch, which means it's going to be a little more expensive. That's really the only drawback to it. Now, prices on them have been coming down, so some people are just putting layer 3 switches everywhere, which frankly is overkill because you're not going to use it everywhere. Um, you're not going to have every switch in your network uh, do inner VLAN routing. That would be chaotic beyond belief. So, um, but if you take that one central uh, switch that's going to do all of your inner VLAN routing and you place it in your uh, network at a central location, a place that works well, it can be the most efficient way to do uh, inner VLAN routing. So, definitely something for you to think about as you're designing your network and purchasing your switches.